Gentry, the catch Scarlet Queen, Philip Carney, master. Position, 8 degrees, 4 minutes south, 112 degrees, 20 minutes east. Wind fresh, sky fair. Remarks, cleared Surabaya, Java after losing valuable cargo. Reason for loss, the peg-legged skipper and the Iberian blade. We followed some dirty weather into the harbor of Surabaya. But as soon as we tied up to the Semarang Trading Company's docks, the skies cleared. Then the port's business renewed. Harbor craft skittered to and fro. Profit in Dutch florins passed from hand to hand under the heat from the Java sun. And a visitor rushed aboard the Scarlet Just Queen. Uh, you are Captain Carney, yeah? That's right. Uh, I am Carl, the bishop from the Samarang Company. Oh, you got cargo for us? Uh, yeah, yeah. Cargo for you to take to Darwin, Australia. We will load at once, yeah? And the papers are in order in the office, and you come up there to sign. Uh, you first get ready to take it aboard. Uh, what's the rush? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a rush. Uh, silicon for the steel mills in Australia. I pay you bonus if you rush, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Gallagher! Uh, Peel the covers off the hatches. We got cargo coming aboard. Done, Skipper. Nielsen, take two men and open number one hole. Cola, give me a hand on number two. Let's go. The papers were in order, and even before I'd come back to the ship, the cargo was streaming aboard. As per the bills of lading, the boxes that were dropping into the holes were marked the Trading Company, Darwin. Hey, what is this stuff, Skipper? Silicon? Yeah. That's a hardening chemical used in making steel, Red. How are we doing? Just about all stone. Good, we can use that bonus. I'm going below and get our clearance papers ready. And just about then, we had our second visitor. I heard him before I saw him. And then he was entering my cabin. He was a seafaring man from his looks. In place of his left leg was a wooden peg. He was past middle age, bloated. He looked at me through pig eyes that were forced almost closed by a frown. I'll have a word with you, Captain Carney, about this cargo. Wait a minute. Who said you could come busting in here? You'll sit down, Carney. My name is Tom Larkin, captain of the schooner Sea Sprite. Can't figure what you and I have got to talk about. This cargo. It'll be loaded before dark, and I'll be casting off at dawn. The cargo, Captain Carney, is rightfully mine. Now, wait a minute. Never mind an argument, Carney. See, I've learned that arguments are won by the man holding the gun. And so Mutual continues The Voyage of the Scarlet Queen, written by Gil Dowd and Bob Tolman, and starring Elliot Lewis. The Scarlet Queen, proudest ship to plow the seas, bound for uncharted adventure. Every week, a complete entry in the log. And every week, a league further in the Voyage of the Scarlet Queen. No arguments, Carney. The cargo is mine. That isn't what the papers say. They're signed by Carl the Bishop and me, and they say the cargo is consigned to me. What do you get off pushing in here with a pistol in your fist saying it's yours? I have a contract with the Semarang Company. I've sailed under their flag for 25 years. It's my cargo. I was delayed by heavy weather in the Straits. Instead of waiting for me, that the bishop gave it to you. You'll be paid a bonus for your trouble and the affair will be settled with new signatures. If it's as simple as that, what's the gun for? I've been dealing with men for a good many years, Connie. Like I say... I learned that more arguments are won by the man holding the gun. I lost a leg as well as an argument one time when I didn't have a gun. It was a strong lesson. All right, how does this argument wind up? You'll come with me up to the bishop's office where the contracts will be re-signed and the cargo will be transferred to my ship. Yeah? Well, we'll see about that. just about dusk when we reached the company warehouse and went through the door into the bishop's office. 
The bishop was through signing or unsigning contracts. The cause of death was unexplained yet. But he was slouched over his desk in an attitude that was unmistakable. Yeah. Yeah, what is this? Beggs, what's happened? A slight man with hunched shoulders and balding head stood in the middle of the room wringing his Lily hands. Lily What happened? Uh, you uh, don't uh, to me. What's the matter with the bishop? I don't know, sir. I was locked up when I came in. I don't know. Don't jibber, Beggs. I don't know, sir. I was locked up. I tell you when Quiet, I came, sir. I really... Don't! Oh. The bishop? The bishop, what's the... Blast you. He lifted the body to an upright position. Blast you with a worthless trap! And he shoved it. The chair upset and the body crumpled to the floor with it. Larkin stood looking down at it. So did I. Looking at the ornate Spanish silver hilt of the Iberian blade. It was protruding from just above the bishop's heart. I'll see to the transfer of that cargo, Connie. What makes you think I'll stand by anything you see to? I've got the authority now that the bishop is dead, and I use it. Look, luck, and I got a contract with the Semarang Company. They're going to release me from it, or nobody is. That's law in Java, or the Malay States, or Australia, or anyplace else. I'll take care of that. Not with me, you won't. Get in touch with the Darwin office. Tell him to notify the port captain here. I'll take my orders from him. I'll take care of that, Captain Connie. You, Beggs, come here. Hey, officer. What's your tie-up with this? What with? With the office, the company. I'm a clock, What sir. was the murder for? I don't know, sir. He, he was like that just sitting there when I came What back. about that cargo? Why is Larkin so hot to get it aboard his ship? I, I don't know, sir. I, I don't know nothing about Captain Larkin's interest Stop in Stop sniveling. <laughs> you better report this murder. Somebody ought to be interested in poor the bishop. <laughs> Kipper in the cabin. Uh, where in places you been? Doping off? I took a little time off and got mixed up in a murder. Yeah, well, put the bottle down. You don't need a drink. That's where you're wrong. I'm not kidding, Red. Well, who, who was it? The bishop. The devil. How come? I think we took on a hot cargo. I tried to get hold of somebody at the customs office to check it for us, but it's after hours. I think to play it safe, we better get the queen out of here. Why? Who are we running from? A Captain Tom Larkin, who's got a peg leg or crew someplace and strong feelings about putting this stuff aboard his ship. I don't want a dozen or so armed men catching us off guard. I want you to move the queen. Where are you going? I'll be in town at the Simpang Hotel. Get her out of sight, anchor in the stream someplace. And break open a few of those boxes and see what the cargo really is. Let me know sometime tonight, will you? Yeah, uh, Sure. I sent a cable to the Semarang Company's office in Darwin explaining things and requesting an answer addressed to me at the Simpang Hotel. Then I checked the local law to see if the bishop's murder had been reported. It hadn't been, so I gave them as much of the story as I knew. Then I went to the hotel to wait. I waited about an hour and a half. Yeah? Copy then, kindly. I must talk to you. The figure on the other side of the door was very trim, darkly appealing, and very feminine. She pushed away into the room and closed the door. I am Marcia Calero. How do you do? I I was for a long time a very close friend to Carl. Carl? Carl de Bishop. We met in Argentina and and I followed him here. Mm-hmm. Uh Sit down, Miss Calero. Thank you. <laughs> it, it is so sad about Carl. Yeah. <laughs> Why'd you come to me? I, I had no place else to turn. It was such a shock to be told by the police like that. So sudden. They, they told me about you and, and I needed someone to talk with. <laughs> In the States, we'd say your act is from hunger, Gordon. I... I beg your pardon. You got my address because you or Beggs or Larkin found out about my cable to Darwin. That's the only place I mentioned this hotel. Suppose we dry up and start again, huh? It's always... 
Captain Carney, where is your ship? That's better. My ship is in a safe anchorage, and it'll stay there until I hear from the Darwin office or turn it over to customs or both. Oh, that is good. I was afraid that uh, Captain Larkin had gained control of it. Why? It was Carl's cargo and mine. Now that Carl is gone, it is all mine. We made the original investment, and now I deserve to make the profit. Is that not right? You aren't wasting many tears over your late, very close friend, but it sounds businesslike enough. I am not so hard as I sound. I am very frightened. Captain Larkin wants to steal the cargo. That is why he killed Carl. Uh What is the cargo? Why, it is silicon. You must have known that, Captain Carney. That's what I was led to believe, yeah. I want you to help me. I want you to protect my cargo and have the police arrest Captain Larkin for killing poor Carl. I would pay you a big bonus. You would do this for me? Everybody's got a bonus. Look, why don't you just tell the police about Larkin? I'm afraid If you're telling the truth, why should you be? I am telling the truth. But sometimes the truth is very hard to tell. About the cargo, you mean? About everything. You see, I am not Carl's legal widow or the remaining legal business partner. Who is that? Hey, Skipper. Oh, Red, just a second. Come on in. Uh, Yeah, I'm on... Well... I should say so. This is Miss Marcia Calero. How are you? Mr. Gallagher. How do you... How do you do? It is my pleasure. No, no, not at all. Yeah, yeah. What did you uh, find out about the cargo, Red, if I may interrupt? Oh, oh, yeah, cargo. Oh, yeah, Skipper. I split open some of those boxes. It's silicon inside, all right. In bars about a foot and a half long and about six by six inches the other way. Capitan, you did not believe me. I do now, gorgeous. I do now. Oh, uh, Skipper, here's something I picked up at the desk for you. It's a cable, I guess. Clerk said that it was... Yeah, thanks, Red. Hold it. Huh? Well, listen. Is Captain Larkin? Get out of sight, gorgeous. In there. Hurry. We'll take care of this guy. All right, take the side of the door, Red. Yeah. I'll open it. You collar him. Yeah, okay. Poison. You'll open the door, Connie. Oh, yeah. For you, I will, Larkin. All right, Junkers, get inside. Hey, what's the crew for, Larkin? Hey, what is this anyway? Get inside. Look out. Look out. Look out. It's enough water for the good captain. Don't want to drown him, Clyde. He's coming round now. Keep him in the chair. Two of you behind him. Get his arms. Now we'll have a word, Connie. Where are we? Never you mind that, sir. What do you want? You'll tell me where your ship is. That's what I want from you. I don't know. You'll be stupid if you want to, Carney. But look round you. The sight may change your mind. I looked at the strange room for the first time. Gallagher was on the floor out. The little bald clerk, Beggs, slumped forward against the line that lashed him to a chair. He was bare to the waist and his torso was striped by welts from a beating. Lashed into another chair sat Marcia Calero, her eyes filled with terror. You understand now, Carne. There'd be no stopping until we learn what we want to know. Where is your ship? What happens to my mate and me if I tell you? No, no, don't tell you. Shut up! <laughs> I said, what happens if I tell you? I'll have that cargo. And what'll we have? My mate and I. (laughs) You'll not go together to show me where your ship is. It's all right. My mate stays here. I'll take you. Then what do we get? No, no, you can't. Once the cargo's aboard the sea sprite, and we're well out of the harbor, you'll be put over the side, and I'll be through with you. I'm supposed to believe that, huh? 
All I want is the cargo, Connie. You and your mate can go hang after that. Well? All right. I gambled because there wasn't anything else to do. I went with Larkin. I marked the spot we left a residence somewhere near the local river, the Calimas. Then we headed toward the waterfront. I led him down onto the mud shore. I was hoping for a small boat, any small boat that would look like it had come from an American ship in these waters. I kept moving forward as though I knew where I was going. And a few hundred yards down... Uh, here's the boat. All right. Get in, sir. Now, start rowing. And remember, Captain Carney, I'm the man who's holding the gun. I rowed us well offshore. I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but I knew I had to do it. And it had to be simple. I figured I'd roll over the side and get under the boat and capsize it. I waited. And then... I heard his shots just as I settled into the water. I went under the boat. Reached up for the port gunnel and pulled down. Threw him off balance and before he could regain it, I had the starboard gunnel and pulled back. Karini sank to the other side. He tumbled out of the boat. I heard him come to the surface. It was working well. I got in his gun went. But I'd made a mistake. I underestimated him. Come ahead, Carney. I'm waiting for you. I'm coming, Captain. I approached him head on and started to circle. I was barely able to see him in the dark. When I circled to close in, he moved toward me. He flipped over on his back and lunged out at me with his peg leg. Caught me in the solar plexus, knocked the wind out of me, doubled me over. He climbed onto my shoulders and pushed me under. Then the peg kept jabbing down at me. I felt it sear along my face as it took a gouge of skin and flesh from my cheek. And with almost my last bit of consciousness, I grabbed out for it. I held on to it. I fought my way to the surface. I kept my grip on it. Using it as a lever, I held his head underwater. His right boot thrashed into my face, my chest, and my belly. But I held on until the kicks got weaker and stopped. And I had to fight with myself to keep from passing out. <coughs> He was only half alive when I pulled him onto the mud shore. His gun was still held tightly in his hand. I took it away from him. We rested for a while. He was able to talk by the time I got him into the bishop's office in the Semarang warehouse. Now, like you say, Larkin, we'll have a word, huh? Sit down. You're a sly one, Carney. But you'll pay for this? I hope so. What makes that cargo worth all this? I don't know. Maybe I can beat you into knowing. No, you can't. Because I'm not lying. I don't know. It's worth a fortune, but I don't know why. How do you know it is? Beggs told me he heard the bishop talking to the woman about it. Didn't you lash the rest of it out of Beggs? No. And you didn't get it out of the bishop before that knife blade went home? I don't know anything about that. Ask Beggs. He was here. I think I might do that. Right after I settle you in that chair so you'll wait for the police. He wasn't comfortable, but he was secure by the time I finished lashing him into place. Then I took Larkin's revolver, dried it, reassembled it, and shoved it into my pocket. As I did, I felt the crumpled, water-soaked cable from Darwin that Red had brought me. It was the first chance I'd had to read it. 
I stopped once before I got back to the residence on the Kalimas River to pick up a likely-looking stick of wood I saw lying by the side of the road. And when I walked down the hall to the room where I'd left Red and the others, I used the stick. With it, I sounded enough like Larkin to fool myself. I hoped my voice would sound enough like him to fool his crewmen. You're open the door, man. I'm alone. Hold it, all of you. Stay where you are. Larkin! I said hold it! Drop your guns. Get your hands on your head. Keep them there. Now, turn around. Get up against the wall. Oh, Carrington, how wonderful you are back. I'm glad you like it, gorgeous. Oh, I do. You will free me now. In a minute, Marcia, since I get my mate on his feet. Hey, Red. Uh, Gallagher. Uh, the devil are you doing? You all right? No, I'm not all right. But I learned enough to play possum after they clubbed me the last few times I came to. <laughs> Give me a lift up, will you? Yeah, sure. Come on, mate. On your feet. There you are. What happened to your face? I got tangled up with that peg leg of Larkin's. Javitan, you will free me Don't now. Don't get anxious, Marcia. Beggs is in worse shape than you are. Here, hold the gun on your friends, Red. I'll okay. cut him loose. Beggs? Come on, Beggs. We'll have you back on your... What's the matter with him? He wasn't built for a flogging like that. Oh, he's dead? He's been sitting there? Come on, Marcia. I'll cut you loose. Oh, oh, oh gracias. I can go with you, Captain. You will stay near me. I'm not so sure you'll want to go with me. Oh, but I do. You have to take me. Okay, remember that you asked me. We're going to my ship to get a few bars of your silicon and enter the customs office. Red, take care of your friends, will you? I'll be back. The English? No, American. Yeah, what is you? you we want? brought you some silicon. We'd like to have you look over. It's from a cargo that belongs to Miss Calero here. It is also unnecessary, Captain. What is it you want, uh, silicon? I want you to take these bars someplace where you can melt them down. Oh, Captain, why you do this? You are so foolish. Maybe gorgeous, but if silicon wasn't the cause of this mess tonight, something else was. What is mess? Two murders to date. What is the silicon? Ask her. I ask you. I do not know what this is all about. No, I think I can come pretty close. A shipment of silicon to Australia is natural enough. It's used to harden iron and making steel. I don't know what its melting point is, but it's pretty high, over a thousand degrees centigrade. So it would be a lot of trouble to melt down the bars to see if anything had been mixed with the silicon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you talk too quick. I, I don't follow so far. You don't have to understand. All you have to do is have it melted to prove whether I'm right or wrong. I do not know anything you are talking about. I will be at my home if the customs officer wants to talk any more to me. Hey, look. Yeah? Get this stuff someplace where you can melt it. I got another stop to make with her. Yeah, if you think it is necessary. It is, Chief. I got it on good authority. Hey, Marcia, wait a minute. Oh, wait. I'll walk you home. I do not think I would like it. Oh, that. come on. Maybe on the way we can figure out how to pin the bishop's murder on bags. Come on. You... You are a difficult man to understand, Kevin Carney. Why did you say that? Because you killed the bishop. So Captain Larkin wouldn't force him to transfer the cargo to his ship. Why do you say that? Because Captain Larkin saw you do it. Oh, he is lying. You know he is. No, I wish I did. I hate to see you go up for it. You aren't the type for Dutch prisons. Oh, uh, Captain, wait. Why did you say that? Because you're so beautiful. Uh, you think so? I'm human. I'm not blind. I do not understand you. Look at me. Mm -hmm. What do you want? For what? To go away or to stay with me? You know what it is about the cargo, no? Sure. Diamonds. They don't have to find them. Why don't you stay with me? We will have money and together a good life. With eyes like yours, gorgeous, you make it tough. Garrido, please. But I saw that Spanish knife handle sticking out of the bishop's chest. Oh, don't, please. I'm afraid I wouldn't have one easy moment with you. Oh, but you would, mi amor. Because I couldn't forget how you handle very close friends when you're through with them. I hate you. I'll kill you. Get away from me. All right, calm down, Let gorgeous. me go. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. The hours between the time I dropped Marcia into the hands of the local homicide boys and our departure from Surabaya were busy ones. Customs took the rest of the silicon off the ship and melted it down. 
The diamonds hidden in it were worth enough to buy and sell the queen three or four times. We took on a legitimate cargo the next morning, and by noon we'd cast off and nosed out into the wind, sweeping down across the island of Majura. Red balled the men into their positions. And the halyards screamed through the sheaves under the pull of strong backs. The mainsail rose into place. The jib went out. And the mizzen. The deck beneath me canted the port. And the Scarlet Queen took the bone in her teeth and settled onto her course. I guess we'll get there with this rig, Skipper. It'll do, Red. At least it's dropping Surabaya on our stern fast enough. Yeah. You know, you're a pretty sharp lad, Skipper. Oh, thanks, Red. How do you mean? Oh, the way you figured out that there were diamonds in that silicon. How'd you do that? Oh, that was simple, Red. I might be just a little psychic. Oh, you haven't got X-ray eyes. I know you well enough to assume that, I think. I hope your opinion of me won't drop when I tell you, Red. That cable from Darwin gave me a, a hint. A hint? Yeah, it was from Customs. They said they'd arrested all the Semarang Company personnel in Darwin and would appreciate any information I could give them on those in Surabaya. Hmm. They were suspected of smuggling diamonds. Oh, a hint. Uh... Well, I did all the rest, Red. Up to and including putting another beautiful woman behind bars. Yeah, well, we'd all be better off if you'd stay away from them and stick to the one you got. <laughs> Here, Skipper. To the queen? She's got a few tricks herself. Yeah. To the Scarlet Queen. After you, mate. After you. Log entry. The Catch Scarlet Queen. 5.30 p.m. Wind fresh, sky fair, sea cresting with high cross swell. Ship secure for night. Signed, Philip Carney, Master. Master. 